Okay. So uh, before we start, um, I will just remind you that uh, perhaps next week, uh, Friday, uh, we will have a quiz, quiz for chapter 12 and 13. So chapter 12 and 13, um, at least at the very first hour of our class for, for Friday, we'll have a quiz. And then after that, we'll still continue the lecture for uh, chapter 14. Uh, no, I think we have 15 next week. So uh, after we finish this class, uh, I will mention uh, some, uh, I'll, I'll attach some links that you need to, uh, you need to watch, uh, some videos. I prepared two videos. One is for exercise chapter 14. And another one is um, additional video for 14.8 uh, because I think I will skip entirely for 14.8. For, uh, uh, okay, now we are looking at the general. Okay, the general. Uh, this is the uh, 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 one way to um, to state the implicit in uh, using the chain rule. Okay, now I will add a few notes here that is, I think, uh, will be important. That if we have uh, we have a function f of three variables, let's say this is zero, and we have z is a function of uh, two variables, then we are we are getting similar similar um, notations. That is, if we have uh, do z do x, this will be equal to bit. And if we have do z do y, we have another one. And to prove this, or if you are confused on how we are getting this, we can let the uh, this f we can take it into our it's actually a similar thing from uh, from the so we have f okay so uh, do f do x here and then do f do z, and then these do z do x. Okay, so we are getting these fives, and we solve this, we can get at least this is the do z do x. And similarly, if we are going to have um, y, then we are getting this do f do y, and then do f do z and do z do y. Okay. Okay, let me give you one example to to show you how does it work. For example. By the way, is my voice clear enough? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There is a new, new, uh, new rules that say that uh, online class until twenty third. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I haven't checked the, the updates. Okay. All right. Let me let me continue. So this is uh, practically um, a typical uh, example of oh, the midterm exam. Do you mean your result? Uh, 
after this class you can email me and if you want to know your score I will uh, reply uh, within the emails okay okay so for everyone who want to know the your, your score you can uh, email me and then I will reply your score Let me continue. So first, to start, we can decide to, to make our own functions. That is three variable. We can make it this, this our, our own functions like this. And then we are going to to take derivative with respect to x and if you can confuse on how we are going to have uh, I mean the the terms we can make our own diagrams so f will be having x y z okay and since z is also another two variables okay. and then we are going to have all with respect to x so do f do x like that and then do f do z and multiply with do uh, dz uh, do z do x so we will have do f do x plus do f do z and do z do x equal to zero so we are going to get do z do x from here Now from the functions, we will have, this will be, uh, do f, do x will be 2x, right? Will be 2x. And do f, do z will be 2z. So we will have negative x over z. Similarly, with the same method, we are going to get do z do y which is negative y over z okay this is we are using the previous method but okay um, we can still do the the implicitly derivative like we did uh, before if you remember we were having uh, these functions, right? If you want to derive this with respect to to x, okay. Now the idea, if you want to directly derive, x is just our variable, right? So this is variable. And y also, uh, no, y is a constant. Y is constant. But z, we can treat z by a function of x, like like we did in, in calculus 1. So we can uh, derive this to x, and then z will be 2z, do z, do x equals 0. So uh, do z, do x is equal to negative x over z. Same, right? And similarly, if you want to derive this to with respect to to y, uh, this is two y, this is zero, and this is two z do z do y, and do z do y is negative y over z. Okay. Also the same. So this is the, the the one way, one way met, uh, one method. This is another method. Both methods correct. It depends on on your um, your preference, and I believe as long as you consistent using the method, 
should be uh, should be not a problem at all. Okay, if there is no questions regarding the this implicit, uh, we can move to new sections. We will have um, the sections called the uh, directional derivative. Okay. okay. I hope we can move to the next page. Okay, if you want to uh, scan or uh, take photo or screenshot. Let me move to another one. So this will be 14.6 uh, directional derivative and gradient factor. Okay, recall that in function of two variables, x, y, we can have our definition of partial derivative for x at this point x0 y0 we can use our limit definition sometimes in your textbook you are using uh, a b or yeah, using AB, this A, B, A, B, A, B, or this X0, uh, Y0, it should be, uh, should be similar, should be the same, same thing. Okay, now... This partial is actually representing, so represents rate of change of z, right? Because z is depends on x and y. Rate of change of z in x and y direction. Okay, now imagine if we have um, we have a, a unit vector. We have a unit vector u. We have a vector u that is in the direction of a, b, and it is moved from point x0, y0. Okay. And this is the uh, y and x. So we have this vector, and this will uh, influence or affect the whole uh, so imagine this u is, is on the on the on the bottom here we have the vector. And this will be the surface, okay, the surface, the surface, the function of surface. So if we are going to move, so if we look at the the point, okay, this uh, uh, this x zero y zero, this will correlate with the point on the surface, right? So when we are going to move this point, we are going to move along the factor u so factor u is going to here this direction we can move use that directions we are moving here here going here right from p to q okay got it okay and when we move here then we can also see that uh, this is actually uh, 
the point on the ground here is also moving alongside this vector u up until here okay okay now we have then uh, so let um, maybe let me write maybe here so let uh, p is at this point and the factor for p prime p prime it's defined with some scalar multiply with the action direction a b right so we can write a factor that is h a h b so through some uh, calculations for the distance we know that the x minus x0 will be our h a or x will be x0 plus h a and y minus y0 is h b and uh, y will be uh, y0 plus h b okay And we know that the z minus z zero will be then equal to and divide by h. Okay, we can divide by h to make it equal. So function x zero plus h a y zero plus h b minus fx0 y0 divided by by h okay because z then remember that z is function of xy so we can we can we can write as this and divide by h okay <clears throat> so as limit of h going to be zero approaching zero this will represent rate of change of z right but we need to specifically say that it's not just represent the rate of change but we, it represent also the direction in direction of factor u now Intuitively, this is what we call the directional derivative. So let, let me write in more, more official definitions. Directional derivative of a function f fxy at x0 y0 in direction of a unit vector we we write the directional as d and then subscript u f x0 y0 equal to limit as h going to zero f x zero plus h a y zero plus h b minus f x zero y zero and provided the limit exists okay provide limit axis okay so this will be the definition for the rational derivative so uh, perhaps the definition is not practical um, it's just um, definition in limit but actually what the limit means if you remember it is actually related to partial right partial derivative 
So partial derivative of x, partial derivative of y. Simply, we are going to just multiply the partial derivative with the, the, uh, the vector, the direction. Okay. So if you finish this notes, I will move to the next section. But I think the important point from here is just the limit definitions for, for directional derivative. If you, if you can understand uh, what directional derivative means is <clears throat> it means that we are going to to look at okay the tangent at every point along the curve okay, along the curve c so we are going to have this curve c which is the um it lies on on the surface s right and we are going to to look at uh the point at all those uh, those uh, paths. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let me go to uh, the next page. Okay. So in more practical, the direction derivative we can write. Um, so if the function is differentiable differentiable with respect to x and y then the function has directional derivative in direction of unit vector u which is the let me just maybe going down there uh, u is a b and then we can write the directional derivative the u f x y equal to partial x x y and multiply with a plus partial y Multi multiply with b so if you look on the limit definition from previous page it's actually the limit definition for for partial so we can have partial x and partial y and each of our partials we we multiply with 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 a and b And I don't think we need proof to connect the um, to connect this uh, directional derivative with, with the limit. I think it's it's easy to 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 observe, right? And I don't think uh, example are are needed now. I'll, I will continue explaining the gradient factor because it's it has connections with directional derivative to get you more uh, more idea on, on how we are going to uh, we are going to analyze most most of the problems in uh, in this section Okay, now if we look at this partial x, partial y, okay, and we have a, b, and a, b is a vector, right? a, b is a vector. So, suppose that, suppose that we have, uh, so let me write here, suppose that this partial x and partial y become another vector.
and this this must be multiplied by dot product right so that we can make our directional derivative formula right we, we are going to reverse this formula and by doing this we see that we have this factor in summary this vector we call the gradient vector this is what we call the gradient vector so this is the product now this gradient vector we can simply write with the symbols we say this is del of gradient so del of f point x y dot product with factor u or unit factor u so as in definition if the function is a function of x and y then the the gradient vector is defined as gradient vector or simply we can write the gradient vector as vector partial x and partial y and if you want we have more than two but maybe maybe three and at, at least the maximum will be three for for our class um three so So uh, another point that you are uh, also going to um, analyze or at least observe from the directional derivative, the results will be a scalar. Okay? The result for directional derivative will be scalar. So it shows you that the function will increase or decrease. Uh, so if, if directional derivative, for example, resulting in um, positive like positive 2 positive 3 it means that it, it's increasing those numbers so it's in for example if it's two units then it will, it will be increasing the function f will be increased having an increased two units every time it's uh, moving uh, towards the direction of the vector okay Okay, let me let me give you an example on how we are going to uh, to view okay, to view our problem. Okay, uh, I will just uh, make emphasize that this point here, the gradient, this will be important. So remember, remember this this point. Okay, remember this point. Okay, if there is no. Is there any questions first? Any question? Is there any, any question? Okay. 
I believe it's 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 actually not not too complicated. Okay, let me continue a little bit. Uh, example. So let f x y z be an x sine x sine y z. Uh, find the gradient of f and find uh, directional derivative at 1, 3, 0 in direction vector u uh, plus 2j minus k. Now first, uh, every time we have the, uh, the functions and we need to to find the uh, directional derivative, we are going to find the gradient factor first. So we can write the gradient factor x, y, z is equal, write the vector, this will be sine y, z. And then we have um, partial y will be cosine, cosine yz, and multiply with xz, and multiply with xz, okay. and partial z, partial z will be xy cosine yz. So partial x, partial y, partial z. So I hope you don't have problem with the partial derivative. Okay. If you still have a problem with, with how to get this uh, result, uh, please let me know. Okay. If you have problems to get these uh, partials. Okay. Now we have the gradient factor. We can input our number one, three, zero. So all has z inside the trigonometry. For sine, it will be a zero. And for partial y, it's also zero. And for the partial z, this will be three, right? Okay. So we input one, three, zero into the equation of the uh, gradient. Now the directional derivative, this will be Gradient vector dot product with the unit vector u. Now we can uh, we can determine the unit vector. Maybe before all the uh, process, we can determine the unit vector as so we will have this is one plus four plus one, so it should be six. So one over square root of six. And then 2 squared of 6 and then minus 1 squared of 6. This will be the unit vector. Now we are going to multiply with the uh, gradient vector. So we are going to multiply 0, 0, 3 and multiply dot product with the unit vector. So don't forget to make it into a unit vector. So we are going to have 0, 0, minus 3, minus 3 over square root of 6. Or we can take it into 3 over 6 uh, minus half square root of 6. So f decrease 1 over 2 square units. In direction factor u. So whenever it goes direction this factor u, the function will decrease this numbers units.
Okay. Uh, next sessions will be the how to maximize the directional derivative. I think it's not too complicated. Okay, by the way, as I mentioned before, if you want to know your midterm score, you can email me and I will reply with the, your um, score. The average is, uh, I think, quite good. Average is around 60, 69 or 70. Uh, probably 69, 69 point something. That's the, the average. Okay, let's move to new page. Okay, this example. So how to maximize maximizing directional derivative. Okay. So if we are looking at our um, equations, we have the dot product, right? We have the dot product. And remember in chapter 12, when we learn about dot product, we learn that we can actually making this equal to the it's 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 value it's its magnitude value which is having cosine right and the theta is in between the gradient vector and the 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 vector u okay so the maximum of cos theta is is one, right? And the the magnitude value of the unit vector is one. So it says that the maximize to maximize uh, or let me let me just write the conclusions in the interim. Okay? So it will be directly our uh, our definition. So suppose f is differentiable functions of two or three variables. Max value of directional derivative is Is this at the given point? And it occurs when you has the same direction with the gradient vector. That is, let me work, that is when theta is equal. Okay, example, we have um, f, x, y, x, e, the power of y. Find rate of change of f at point B. in direction from B to Q and the second question in what in what direction does F have the maximum 
rate of change. What is this maximum rate of change? So first, we need to find the rate of change at this direction, PQ. And then later, we need to also to find what direction for its maximum and what is the value of that maximum rate of change. Okay. So to begin, how to solve this is first, perhaps we are going to, to get the, the gradient vector. So gradient vector, we will have partial x and partial y, uh, in which we have e with power of y and then um, x e with power of y. It's the same with the, with the original function. And at, at 2, 0, we will have this will be 1, and this will be 2. That's the gradient vector. The vector PQ is half minus 2 is minus 3 over 2, 2 minus 0 is 2, and the unit vector is We can uh, we can get uh, this will be nine of four four this should be a sixteen sixteen over four or we may have twenty five over four okay. so this will be square root of twenty five over four or uh, five over 2 so this will be equal to the unit vector equal to negative 3 over 5 and 4 over 5 so rate of change from P to Q can write the directional derivative at two zero is the, the, the f multiply dot product with u the unit vector. So this will be one two dot product with with this we will have negative 3 over 5 plus 8 over 5 or this is, will be equal to 1 the rate of change is S1 and then we know that F increase fastest to find the maximum rate fastest when The gradient vector at 2, 0 is 1, 2. And the maximum rate of maximum rate of change is the magnitude of gradient vector at 2, 0. And we are going to take our vectors and take it into our value which is square root of 5 this will be the maximum rate of change
Okay. So I hope this example can help you to uh, to imagine the idea. For further exercise, uh, I'm planning to give you another, perhaps another um, additional video for uh, for helping you understand better. Aside from um, attachment from the textbook that I will give you after the class, I will also prepare the additional video for, for chapter 14. Um, there are one video already I will share uh, with you later. But I will prepare another one for helping you to, to get a new um, a new a practice for, for any of the questions. Anyway, if you have any questions, um, you can leave the message on the chat box. Okay, we move on. Okay. Now, the last section in the in this uh, directional derivative is actually the the tangent plane. Okay, so we are going to look on uh, tangent plane as we looked before in fourteen point four. And simply now I will make a new, uh, not new, a, a general a formulation for for all tangent planes in partial derivative. Okay. So this is supposed to be the tangent plane. Tangent planes to level surfaces. Let me move this. Okay, now let's start with with um, mentioning uh, familiar uh, terms that S is our surface, right? And we have equations of three variables and because it's related to level surface, then the function should be about level surface. So we need to equal this with a constant k. Okay, this will um, will give you fives that um, the variables, okay, or the three variables will will uh, will be determining the level uh, of the curve. If you remember the the maps, the contour in the uh, geography in the maps uh, that is uh, one way to to look at the, the level okay. so uh, we, we can write this as level surfaces level surface of functions of three variables okay let let point let point b uh, let's say x0, y0, z0 at the surface, S, okay? And C will be a curve on S that pass through, pass through point P. Okay? And if you remember, this is simply similar to what the directional derivative has, right? The directional derivative says that in point P here, we have this vector, right? The vector unit. But now, to make our directions, we are going to have this uh, vector R. Okay? So our C, we can make into our vector function. So, so C, is our vector functions with parameter t okay. and we can make it into our parameter equations of x and y or z sorry it's, it's supposed to be uh, i think three variables and let let the point p be x0, y0, z0 corresponds with the t0. 
So we are going to evaluate at t0 to make it um, x0, y0, z0. Oh, so the maximum rate of change is always at yeah, the maximum rate of change is um, it's always at the same direction as the uh, unit vector. So the the, um, the gradient factor should be the same as the unit factor, and the the value is uh, the the magnitude value of the gradient factor. Okay, now when we deal with the t zero as the parameter. And if we have the f, or maybe let me write, uh, because the curve C lies on the surface S, right? So we will have the functions of three variables x, y, z, we can write as x, t, y, t, and z, t. And let's say um, this is equal equal to k a constant, but when we derive okay, when we derive partially when we derive partially you're using the chain rule, so you have of f x y z, and this is t t t. This will be going to uh, have a new structure in the chain rule. If we are going to derive with respect to t, okay, with, uh, so derive with respect to t. So this will be having all with t terms. Equal zero. Okay. Okay, now if we look at since the the gradient factor we can write also in terms of uh, partial x, partial y, partial z, right? And the r prime we can also write as um, x prime t, or maybe maybe let me write here as the gradient factor we can write as partial x, partial y, partial z, and the r prime we can write as x prime, y prime t, t prime t. Now this all equations okay this is partial x right this is partial y this is partial z ah, sorry z now we can write this in terms of the gradient factor f dot with the r prime t and it's supposed to be zero okay and if you look at the how we define this in the in the in the graph. The gradient factor will be having orthogonal with the r prime. Okay, so this means that let me write that this is orthogonal with the r prime. So we will have gradient factor at particular point x0, y0, z0 dot with the r prime of t0, this will result in 0. Um, from uh, This is the first connection. Okay, 
And then, and then, remember, when you deal with the tangent plane in chapter 12, if you remember chapter 12, we know the tangent plane, okay? We can, uh, we can tailor our plane from the normal factor, right? This gradient factor is normal factor. And we call this, uh, this uh, uh, partial x, partial y, partial z is the direction numbers, if you remember the chapter 12. So actually, we can make our own tangent plane through the gradient factor, okay? Now, if we look at this uh, gradient factor here. Or maybe let me write in the new page to make it clear, okay, at least it's, uh, the space is too short here. So perhaps um, I will wait for you if you want to write or want to take a screenshot. I will move to, to the next page, okay. So please, if you want to write some notable notes or take a screenshot. I think the important point is the, the bottom one. A few parts on the button so that that will be important okay okay let me write here okay let me write again that the, the gradient factor f at x0 y0 c0 dot with the r prime t0 is equal to okay now um, since gradient factor is orthogonal to the r prime t0 okay if the gradient factor is not equal to zero so we can define the tangent plane to the level surface f x y z equal k at p x zero y zero z zero as plane that pass through p and has a normal vector gradient factor x0 y0 c0 so we can write down the equations partial x or maybe let me write with the black line partial x So we write partial x at x0, y0, z0, multiply with x minus x0, plus partial, partial y at x0, y0, z0. It's too big. There it is. This equal to zero. And we develop a more general terms in, in uh, tangent plane or tangent plane. Aside the tangent plane equation, we can also develop something called the normal line. It's different from the normal factor. It's normal line. The normal line will be uh, equivalent with the symmetric. 
with the symmetric equations. Symmetric equations in parametric. So remember the uh, parametric equations. So the normal line is x minus x0 defined by partial x defined by partial y. Okay, so the idea for the tangent plane is actually having the partial for its, its direction. So you need to find the gradient factor and then use that gradient factor to, to develop their own uh, direction numbers. Okay. However, if you still think that this is having a, a different, uh, different connections with the previous one, <clears throat> remember the previous one we have is we have z minus c zero equal partial x plus partial y. These terms, right? Now, to get the idea on how we can get these terms in a more general way is the surface, the surface S in the form of Z having two variables X, Y. So our level surface functions, still we have three variables. We we need to make it into into new definitions. That means our gradient vector will be partial x, partial y, and negative one. So the tangent plane we will have partial x partial y and negative one and then z minus c zero and this will be giving us the same equations as we learned before right Okay, so I think this equation, the general one is, uh, I think, pretty important. Uh, any questions? Okay. 
Okay, I will move to a new page. And I think for most part, um, that will be the end of 14.6. Okay. And we can move to 14.7. Okay. And remember that 14.8, we will skip in class, but you need to watch my additional video. Okay. We still have that in our um, lecture, but I will not go in more details in class for 14.8. You can just watch from, from the video. And if you have questions, you can, you can uh, ask. Okay, let's move to a new page. Uh, perhaps we start from, let me see. Okay, we start uh, to end the 14.6. There are a few, few properties that I believe uh, will be important for you. Okay. So it's, it's, it's about the gradient factor. So Directional derivative of f at the uh, direction of unit vector u is given by du f. Um, this x means the vector, right? It can be, it is a vector, and it can be two or three variables. Okay, so, and uh, the gradient factor points in the direction of maximum rate of increase of f at uh, those uh, at the factor x and the maximum rate of change is magnitude value of the gradient factor and gradient factor is perpendicular okay, to level curve or level surface of f through x it means that the, the gradient factor is we can say it's a normal factor normal factor through through some plane Okay, now we can move on to 14.7, which is the, the maximum and minimum values. So maximum minimum values, if you remember calculus one, this will correlate with the, the chapter uh, four. In our calculus one, as a as a, a short review, in calculus one, we did to um, we know max or mean through critical point, right? Critical point, and we can find critical point. One way to find is using the first derivative. And this the first derivative should be equal to zero for, for finding critical point, or the derivative is the next is right. And secondly, we find through the second derivative, we find the concavity. We can analyze or observe the concavity, and sometimes we are having the inflection point in which usually the second derivative when the second derivative is zero or it changed from concave upwards to concave downwards or concave downwards to concave upwards okay. and simply we can analyze easily because uh, we are only having two dimensions right on the thing x and y But in calculus 2, we are having functions at least two variables. And it will be difficult to draw in, in two dimensions because it's, it's not represent all points. So we need to have a three dimension space to, to get through. So first, let me draw this to give you clear illustration on, how, on why or how we are looking at the maximum minimum value. So we are having a three dimensions, okay, and all the terms is practically practically similar. Okay? We will have a, a, a absolute having absolute for the highest one in the domain, okay, and local 
if we restrict the uh, the area, for example, if we restrict the area just around the circle, then we say that this is the local maximum. Okay. So perhaps we start with the definitions that uh, a function f has a local max at certain point if exists a disk centered at x0, y0. The disk is the restriction, okay, the restriction such that, ah, oh, sorry, such that the value is higher than most of it for all points on under this and similarly you will have local mean if your point is lower and you have also absolute max If your point is higher in in the domain in the whole domain and the absolute mean this will be less in the domain so this will be the intro uh, for the definitions Okay. Yeah, I believe you need to just to look on this for for definitions, and I don't think it's 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 necessary to write all. Okay, next sections. Okay. Let me imagine what we did uh, before. Uh, we called that our bounded bounded set. So in two dimensions. We use this bounded set to to determine local or a local max or local mean, right? So we can bound bound this uh, these functions with certain uh, square, right? Now, if we are looking at three dimension space like that, then we are going to have if we have uh, uh, random functions in in the, in the space, then the bounded sets will be also three dimensions. For example, this box. So we are going to use this box to to restrict the uh, the functions, okay? which one that we are going to evaluate and observe to see whether it has maximum or minimum in certain certain point. Okay. Now first we are going to look at the extreme value theorem in uh, three dimensions okay. so if function of two variables continues on a close and bounded sets of r uh, real numbers then function has both absolute max and absolute mean 
So this 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 is pretty much uh, it should be an obvious one. So whenever you have a uh, random functions, any function you have, you restrict on some parts, then you will see that it will have the absolute maximum and absolute minimum at least one one absolute minimum one absolute maximum okay at least one so they will have both maximum and minimum the absolute maximum and minimum so that's the first uh, part of maximum value theorem and then the second part is if f has a local extreme it can be max or mean at a point uh, point x0 y0 and if the first order of partial derivative F exists at x0, y0, then partial x, x0, y0 should be equal to 0, and partial y, x0, y0 is equal to 0. This will be, this will settle critical, critical point. at x1 right or x0 y0 and we know that this is uh, the Fermat theorem the same theorem with the calculus one so we have the the critical point going through from uh, the first derivative equals zero but now we have the partial okay? so we have to use partial x and partial y and make make them uh, both equal into zero to get our critical point. To give you more clear and concise um, and more practical, I will, I will give you more, more, more uh, clear um, understanding on some examples. I'll okay, maybe one example to see um, the critical point. Okay, let me move to uh, the next section. So here we have the. Uh, well, let me write the, the, the functions. So the function of two variables x, y is equal. Okay, first we find partial x and then we find partial y. And then we can equaling this to zero. This will be equal to one. And equaling this to zero also, we get y is three, right? So we get the notions that one and three will be our critical points. And if we look at the, the function itself, if we look at the function itself, if we look and we try to simplify, we get the uh, the idea that this turns out to be, uh, we can complete the square, so plus one plus nine, right? Three squared, yeah. So we have negative 10. So this will be x minus 1 squared plus y minus 3 squared and then plus 4. So this is our, our function. Now, if we look at the, our function here, and if, if f is, we can take it into z and we remember our quadric surface. Okay, If we remember the quadric surface, this will be a paraboloid, elliptic paraboloid, right? Or a circle par uh, paraboloid, circular paraboloid, right? Uh, we have the, the vertex is 1, 
right? One, usually the vertex is zero, zero for parabolic, but this is shifted to x equal one and y equal three. So if we look at the the picture, this will be our 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 point. So at this one, three, four, it has extreme extreme value, right? Extreme value. Or in our case, this will be the minimum value. Okay, it's true. So it's confirmed that uh, the f one three equal four is the minimum value or local minimum, or we say this is um, absolute absolute minimum. Okay, because there is nothing lower than this point. Okay. Okay. Now, if we Take another example. Y squared minus X squared. If we remember the quadric surface in chapter 12, if you remember, this is Z, Y squared minus X squared, right? This will be a paraboloid and having a hyperbola, right? So we, we call a hyperbolic paraboloid. If you remember how, uh, or if we if we try to 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 take approach like we did here, we take partial x, we take partial y, okay. So we take those partials and do the same thing with this uh, with this hyperbolic parabolic. This will equal negative two x partial y will be two y, and it seems it seems that point zero zero will be our critical point. But the question from, from this critical point is whether this is maximum or minimum. Now if you look at the picture, if you remember how to, to draw the hyperbolic parabola, if you remember how to draw, this will be the uh, the default drawing for the hyperbolic parabola. So y squared minus x squared, so z will be the main axis. Okay, so you can see z is the main axis. So at this zero zero, at this point, we are not really sure whether it's maximum or minimum. Okay, if we look on the whole whole uh, picture, because clearly this part is higher, right, and this part is is lower. So Zero zero is in the middle. So, uh, what point is this? We remember that I mentioned, I mentioned that at this point we call the point a saddle point in the quadric surface. In chapter twelve, I mentioned that this is called the saddle point. So this is a critical point, but it's not maximum or minimum. We call this a saddle point. Now, how to, to define which one is which, okay? Which one is maximum, which one is a saddle point. Now, we need to develop a new test, okay? the second derivative test with certain, um, certain formulation, okay? Okay, now maybe I will write here. Now, second derivative we need to, to, to make it uh, or maybe let me just write directly uh, the definition. Let f a function of two variables with continuous second order of partials in some disk centered around let's say we have critical point that is x0 and y0 and let we have b in the t the determinant 
is equal partial xx partial y y minus partial x y squared or we can write t in terms of uh, x x x uh, y x x y y y determinant and then from this determinant if d is positive and from this d positive we have partial x x that is positive partial x x that is negative this will be local mean this will be local max and if d is less zero then x0, y0 is saddle point, or maybe I would write it. Saddle point. If t equals 0, this will be inconclusive. Well, it, it, it can be used partial xx or partial y y or partial y y. It's also the same, but we can just, I think, take just partial xx to make our uh, calculations uh, easier. Okay, so perhaps um, to give you more clear approach and uh, clear calculations, perhaps we can at least have one or two examples. Okay. One or two examples. Okay, I think we can move, right? Let's move to new page and giving you a example on how to use this second derivative test. Okay. So the idea is, so the important thing is this determinant and then use this uh, three, uh, three uh, requirements whether it's uh, having positive, negative, or equal zero. And it will determine how your uh, po critical point will be. Okay. So basically, uh, let, me, let me write an example. So we have a function x to the power of 4 plus y to the power of 4 minus 4xy plus 1. So the, the, the question is asking, find local max, local mean, and uh, saddle point. So which point that uh, gives you the local max, local mean, or saddle point? So first of all, when, whenever you have this uh, functions, you, you are given a function, the first thing you can do is 
first find the critical point. So let me write the the procedure. So finding, so finding the critical point. So how to find the critical point? We are going to to, to use the first derivative, which is the partial uh, only partial. Okay, the first partial. Partial x will be equal to four x cubed, uh, negative four, four y, and partial y will be four y cubed minus four x. Now we need to to take it and equaling this to equal to zero. So we will have x cubed equal to y and y cubed is equal to x. Or if you look at, um, we can make this um, substitution. So if we want to substitute and go substitute to here, So this will be x cubed, x cubed, x cubed, which are x9, right? So x9 minus x is equal to 0. We can factorize this and simply factorize this x cubed, uh, x, x8, sorry. So we have x, x4, x4. Can factorize the negative one. Can factorize and we still can factorize okay now the only real numbers that we can get is x equals zero x equal 1 and x equal negative 1, right? And then we can uh, take it into our uh, y cube, right? y cube. So we will get the y will be 0, 1, and negative 1, right? So we will get three critical points. So three critical points. So we can we make a table, actually. We can make a table. We can make a table that simply x, y, so 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. Okay. So we have three critical points, and then after that, uh, Or maybe make let's the table into here, and then after that, use second derivative test. So first is we take the partial x x, which is twelve x squared, right, and then partial x y which is this, just negative 4, and partial y, y, which is 12, y squared. Or to make you maybe remember that partial x, y is actually similar to partial y, x equal to negative 4. This is, uh, we already did discuss this, right? The partial x, y equal partial y, x. It's Clairaut's uh, theorem. Now, we can take the the determinant that is f x x f y y minus x y squared. Okay. So we can make a table contains all the informations that we are going to calculate, which is d and then partial x x and then conclusions. Okay, now we take the first critical point zero zero. So partial x 
partial x x will be zero, partial y y will be zero, right? Zero, or we'll be right here, zero minus partial x y is negative four. It's squared. It will be sixteen. We know that this will be negative, right? That the determinant will be negative. We don't need the partial x x. The conclusions will be this is the central point. So zero zero is central point. And now one one. One one we take one twelve twelve it's one four four. Same minus sixteen. This will be positive. So because it's positive, we need to know the partial xx. So partial xx is also positive. So what's happened when we have these two positive? So look here, we have the local mean. Local max at the point. Local mean we have the positive, right? So this will be. So since it's positive, positive, this will be local mean. And same thing here. We have one four four minus sixteen. It's positive, positive. This is also local mean. Okay. And if we uh, take into our graphing calculators or our graphing website, we will get that. This is true. So this will be the saddle point, the saddle. This will be, these two will be the local mean. So this is one, one. This is negative one, negative one. This is zero, zero. Okay. I think the the picture is, is I think is, is quite funny. If you if you watch the the cartoon, this is uh like a pa Patrick Star. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's that's the example on uh, maximum minimum value. Yes, Patrick. <laughs> Okay, maybe I will add one uh, or just a few notes about the absolute maximum and minimum on how to, to take the sets, okay? So if F continues on close bounded sets in domain in the R, the function attain absolute max and mean at some points in the domain. Okay. So what does it mean? So what does it mean? So it means that you need to calculate so critical points, right? Critical point, and then extreme value, which means the second derivative, finding which one is maximum, minimum, or saddle point, and then you need to evaluate the largest value, so largest and uh, smallest. And then evaluate evaluate the boundary so which means that your largest and smallest value it is not always the critical point it can be the endpoints okay the endpoints so if you have a sets of domain that is certainly giving you information then you need to, to check all the possible points that that be, that is given in the information okay and i think i will up until here and we will have um we will have a small feedback a small feedback and since we are going to have i think it's already updated to you and you can check also i think we will have online class right we will have online class
So uh, perhaps the quiz, um, I will take it online. Okay, but for for final exam, I, I believe we should have offline, and I will have, and uh, maybe in the June we will have uh, the final exam okay, as uh, as we uh, discuss in the early classes. So perhaps either first week or uh, second week of June we will have the. Uh, the final exam. So in the meantime, for the quiz, I think we will have uh, online. And if you feel that um, not really prefer online quiz, uh, the percentage will be, um, I think, as not as much as the offline test. Okay. To make it, uh, uh, to make it more. Um, fair in, in, in fairness for, for the exam. If you have any idea, please let me know, okay, if you have any idea. Okay, I will uh, stop the this sharing and then we can have uh, feedback times, okay, if you, if you don't mind. So let me stop the sharing and then let me share. If you haven't, if you haven't uh scan the qr code you can scan qr code now before we start the feedback time okay i will, I will start the feedback okay, if you haven't scanned this i uh, will show you later at the end okay so we can start our feedback time Okay, so please scan the QR code or join via the menti.com, the website, and use the code, okay? All right, uh, let's start. Don't forget to use your student ID or name. I think student ID is better. Okay. All right. Uh, we will see some students. Okay. Get ready. Three, two, one. Start. Sorry for the short time. Okay. Really short time. It's just twenty-seven seconds. You need to take notes every, every, is it every straight line? It says it every straight line. Okay, it should be fine. Okay. Okay, next question. Question two. Okay, sorry for long question. I think I gave you yeah around one minute, so it should be should be sufficient. So careful, okay. So you have a P, P is function of G and H, and G and H is function of T. So you are actually deriving P with respect to T, right? And you have all the information for the numbers that you can just substitute into the equation.
No one get the correct answer. Okay, let's move on. Okay. Okay, question three. Okay, remember we just learned about this, but perhaps it's not in the in the terms of gradient factor. But if you remember what is gradient factor, then you can know what it, it is. Yeah, it's true. The partial x partial y equals zero. That's what it means for for the gradient factor. Okay, okay. Well, last question. Last question. Find directional derivative at those po at those given point and with the direction of this vector. Okay. I believe the answer is in the fraction, so you need to write in the fractions, not in decimals, okay? Write in the fraction. And carefully, you need to uh, calculate, okay, careful, especially if you have the square root, careful to, to evaluate those square root. I hope the time is enough. Don't forget to find the unit vector. You need to calculate the unit vector, not only the vector. Oh, I think a bit more time. Yeah, hopefully you get the answer. 30 seconds. Twenty twenty fifteen. Oh, one student submit ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Okay, I think too, too short eight, eight times. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oh, it's twenty five over six. <laughs> yeah, sorry for the short short time, but. Uh, you can uh you can uh study later okay uh, and uh oh yeah there's okay so congratulations you are uh, winning this game uh suppose we have preference okay we have preference uh but i think it's it's online now but it's it, if if something happen again after that uh but I think I would just take online, right? Yeah, I also prefer, actually I prefer offline because I have more interaction in classes. But I think given the circumstances, uh, and I think the school already knows for online until 23rd of May, but what will happen after that, well, we're still not sure. But I think for our class, I think we keep online. Is that okay? This is, I just I just want to know uh, some survey from, from you guys. Okay, if there is no questions, then 
uh, this will be the end of our lecture. Don't forget to watch the additional video I will uh, attach later in the Moodle. So please watch the video about the exercise chapter 14 and the additional video about 14.8. So next week, uh, not next week, next Monday, yeah, next week, Monday, we are going to move to the new uh, new chapter, chapter 15. Okay, chapter 15. So um, we will learn more on uh, multiple integral. So we'll finish chapter 14, which means that perhaps in the future we will have a quiz on chapter 14. But we will have quiz first on chapter 12 and 13. I will share my notes for you to check for having a more easier way to study. Uh, supposed to be the quiz supposed to be next Friday, but it seems if we are having online, then the quiz will be, I think, will be online. So um, that will be our uh, our lecture for next week. Okay, if you don't have any questions, then I will stop this video and you can you can leave the uh, the meeting okay if you have any any questions please email me okay let's stop